What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, smoky, crispy skin, herby Thanksgiving turkey with bacon stuffing and homemade gravy. Coming up! Thanksgiving is upon us folks and as a cook on YouTube I am required by law to show you how I prepare a Thanksgiving turkey. That being said I don't plan on reinventing the wheel here but one thing's for certain and that is that it is going to be delicious. Just a little prick. Ooh, juicy. This is a turkey. Nothing too fancy here, just your standard butter ball from the old grocery store. Pat it dry. And we are simply going to open it up, make sure there's no ice in there, see if there's anything hiding in here. Ooh, hello. How you doing? Turkey neck, save that for some stock later on. Just get it cleaned up. Always in the neck here, there's usually a little compartment as well. Hello. Get all the giblets out of there. Again, save that for stock and gravy. We got ourselves a clean turkey. While we're at it, I'm gonna go through and just take this little tail off right here. This is what was holding the legs together. Snip that off. Put that in the stock pile. Bah, 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 bah. What creature is that? I don't know. This is a 13 pounder. I typically get one or two of these depending on the size of the crowd because it's a lot more forgiving to cook two 12 pounders than it is one 24. That way if you mess one up, you still got the other one. But most importantly, if you have two different birds that you're cooking, they're gonna cook a lot quicker. And at the same time, you can do two different flavor profiles, whether it's two different brines, two different rubs, throw one on the chud box, one on the offset, up to you. Gobble, gobble, gobble. But when it comes to turkeys, I always like to use a spatchcock. We talked about the spatchcock a few times on the show. It's basically when you remove the spine and there's so many good reasons for doing so. There's this big hole in the middle. It's gonna take a lot longer to cook, especially if there's chunks of ice in there. So to spatchcock a turkey is real simple. Just get yourself a nice pair of poultry shears, something heavy duty, and we're just gonna go right on either side of the tail, starting from the bung region. And we're just gonna go right on either side of the spine going all the way down there. Some bones are gonna crunch through, so that's why you wanna have a really nice, sharp pair of kitchen shears. And if you're ever having problems getting through it, you can always bust out a cleaver or a heavy chef's knife or something to really get in there. But scissors work out just fine. The beauty of the spatchcock is that it's gonna sit flat, which means it's gonna cook a lot more evenly. It's all gonna be one level on the grate, and especially on a smoker where the top rack is typically a lot hotter. If this thing's sitting six, seven inches tall, the, the breast meat that's on top will cook a lot faster than the thigh meat that's on bottom or however you have it situated. So this way, everything's gonna cook more evenly, it's gonna cook a lot faster because we're taking out some mass, we're getting rid of the cavity in the middle. And also, once you have this here spine removed, you can uh, save this for gravy right off the bat so you don't have to wait till everything's done. You can get your chicken stock going while the bird is cooking. Clean this out. This is a fully thawed bird. Still got some ice in there though. I bought this a few days ago. It's been sitting in the fridge. But simply enough, that's how you uh, remove a spine. While we're at it, we'll cut these little, cut the legs apart here. They tie them together to keep it all in one nice little package. And you could cook it just like this. Although you always have to fold your wingtips, folks. There's nothing more unappealing to me when I see a bird that's just got these wingtips hanging out. Tuck them, just simply poke them behind. It's gonna save the ends from burning and it also looks nice. And you can cook it just like this, but I think that's a really stupid look. I don't like the legs splayed out like this. I don't like it when the legs are up like this. I want it to cook evenly. So what we're gonna do is just put a little cut right in the breastbone here which is gonna help us then snap that and then we can pull it all together just like a chicken. And that's the proper formation for turkey smoking right there. And just like a brisket, we kinda got a fatty end and a lean end. So we're gonna aim this towards the fire just like this and this way heat is gonna come right across kinda like those car aerodynamic tests. But most importantly, now all the skin is facing upwards, which is where we want it to be, especially on a convective cooker like the one I'm gonna use. Instead of having the thighs be in a different angle or anything like that, we're gonna have all of the skin exposed to the heat and everything's gonna cook real evenly and we're gonna get some really nice crispy skin. Because as you know, there's no black rubbery skin on Chud's Barbecue. So wings are tucked, bird is spatchcocked, nice and flat, splayed out, backside nice and clean. 
When it comes to brining your turkey, there are several options. First of all, you don't have to brine it. You could just put a flavorful rub on there and hope for the best. Two, you could use a wet brine, which basically requires a five gallon bucket and a whole bunch of fridge space, which I've done in the past and it comes out really well. And then there's number three, which is the dry brine. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the dry brine. When it comes to smoking poultry, we're after a nice dry surface to get that really crispy skin. And that's where the dry brine really comes in handy. And as you can tell, this method is all about convenience for the home cook. So all a dry brine really is, is pre-seasoning the bird with kosher salt. So I'm just gonna start on the backside here and just give it a nice heavy sprinkling of this kosher salt. And how it works is basically this salt is gonna start by drawing moisture out of the bird. Then that moisture is gonna dissolve the remaining salt on the skin, creating a natural brine. And then that brine on the surface will penetrate back in and it's gonna give us a really nice, well-seasoned bird, and also the salt's gonna help tenderize the meat a little bit. So don't be too shy here. Cover it in a nice layer of salt. We're gonna let this go for a good few days. This is uh, Wednesday that I'm doing this. I'm cooking this on Friday. You could add extra flavors at this point if you wanted to hit it with some rosemary or some sage or something like that, but we're gonna address that in a little bit here. All right, this bird is all seasoned up. Now it's time to throw it into the fridge. So I'm gonna place it on this here rack just like this in the fridge uncovered for the next two days you can go two three days really allow time for that salt to penetrate deep into the meat and when all is said and done we'll come back and we'll add some more flavor now that our turkey is dry brining in the fridge, we've still got several days on our hands before we get to actual cooking. And on the big day of Thanksgiving, I've usually got plenty of people and beers floating around, so I like to get as much done ahead of time as possible, starting with that turkey spine we just removed. As you know in all videos, I always tell you to save your bones and extra meat pieces because they go great in a stock. And this is the time of year that it comes in super handy because we are gonna make our own stock and make some super tasty gravy and some really good stuffing. As you can see, I just cleared out my freezer here and I've got some turkey bones, some duck bones, some pork bones from the ribs and all that good stuff. If you wanted to keep it classy, you could do all turkey, maybe turkey and chicken and make that a poultry stock. But today I'm gonna make a master stock using all the bones I have in house to make a really super tasty stock stock. When making a stock, you have two options. You can just throw all these raw bones in a pot and boil them down, skim off all the uh, chud that forms on the top and end up with a nice clear blonde stock. Or typically you'll see people roasting these or sauteing them in a pot and getting a nice fawn to get that nice Maillard flavor on there. They have a really rich, flavorful brown stock and that's what we're gonna do today. But we're not gonna be using an oven or a saute pan. Boot snake. Nice and toasty. We are rocking a solid 300 degrees on this here mini chud box. And now all we're gonna do is throw on all of these bones until we have some really nice color on them. This is a great step too, because this is really gonna help make a super unique flavorful stock that's gonna make your gravy better than anyone who's using stock out of a carton. And it's also a great time to clean out your freezer. Get all these bones out of there. Mm, this is smelling so good already. We got plenty of turkey on there, some duck, a little bit of pork. So this is gonna be a super flavorful stock. But to take it another step further, we're also gonna throw on some vegetables. I got a white onion, some celery, and a couple of whole heads of garlic that are cut in half to expose the meat. And we're gonna get these toasted up as well. Just a little extra flavor. And we'll throw a couple of carrots in the mix too. Get a little mirepoix going on. So we're just gonna cook this down for about an hour or so until everything's got some really nice color on it and start building those layers of flavor. As you can see, Brooke, what are you doing? I'm putting in a weather vane. <laughs> nice weather cock. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep flipping it. Don't want anything to burn. All right, an hour later, these things are starting to look real nice. Some pieces have some really nice color on them. It smells nice and smoky, turkey neck looking good. So let's throw them into a pot and get this stock a rolling. In we go. Look at that beautiful onion. Boop. I need a bigger pot. Now we're gonna fire it up and fill it on up with water. We're just gonna let this come up to a boil. 
Once at a rolling boil, we're gonna tone this down a little bit here so we don't have anything splashing all over the place. And we're gonna let this simmer for the next four hours or so, three, four hours, depending on how hot you're going. Make sure nothing's burning, it doesn't reduce down too much, but we'll check back in later. While we're at it, we might as well make this stock a little more Thanksgiving-y. Starting with some rosemary, thyme, sage, a couple of bay leaves never hurt. Also got some parsley stems on hand. And just like any stock, you don't need to be using pristine vegetables and cuts of meat for this. If you've got an onion that's looking kind of sad or some stems or whatever you got, just throw it on in. Ooh, I also, I found this old bone marrow bone in the, in the freezer. I already ate all the marrow out of it, but might as well throw the bone in there and add another animal to the pot. It smells fantastic. Well, I'll throw in some peppercorns as well while we're at it. It's finally turkey day. Our turkey is dry brined, our stock is made. I think it's time to throw it on the pit. While we wait for our pit to come up to temperature, we're gonna make a compound butter to add some extra flavor and richness to our turkey. In this bowl here, I'm going to add four sticks, AKA one pound of softened butter, to which we are going to add some dry thyme, cause I didn't feel like picking it myself. Fresh rosemary. Some freshly chopped sage. Then we'll go in with a little pinch of cayenne for Chef John, some flaky salt for Josh Weissman, and then we're gonna tiny risk this all together for Babs. Almost forgot, we're gonna throw in some fresh parsley as well. It'll fait so. After three days of dry brining, this turkey is looking dry. You can see that the skin is nice and tightened up on there. No signs of salt anywhere, which means you know it all got dissolved into the meat, which is a wonderful thing. All right, to add some more flavor, now we are going to take our compound butter that we just made. We're gonna rub it all over this bad Larry just to make it taste even better. Add some fat to it, because turkeys are pretty lean. And to do that, we're gonna try and get our hands in here and go underneath the skin. Just be careful not to tear it. And once you have it separated, then we're gonna go in with the butter. butter. In, big old scoop. Let's smear this all around. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is gonna help the skin get crispy from both sides. And while we're at it, we're gonna go all over the outside too. You can never have too much butter when cooking a turkey. Boop. Get some butter all up in there. Oh God, Henry. One more step before we throw this here turkey onto the fire. And that is we're gonna hit it with a little bit of extra granulated garlic. And of course, we're gonna go in with some 16 mesh black pepper. Cause this is a Texas turkey after all. Might as well throw a little butter on this side too. And some black pecker. pepper. Just need to get this fire a little bit hotter. We're aiming for around 300 degrees. Perfect. Now that our fire is up to temp, it's time to throw on our turkey. We're gonna go breast side towards the fire, right in the middle of this hiakuka. And there we go. And again, it's all about how you set it down. And you don't want the legs too high up on the breast. You know the drill. We'll come back in a few hours. Now that our turkey is on the smoker, let's talk about sides. In my opinion, there is a severe lack of bacon on the Thanksgiving table. So today, we're gonna change that. This is the very bacon that I made in my how to make bacon tutorial. Told you I'm cleaning out the freezer this time of year. Bacon. I am simply going to cube this up. This is as big or as small as you like. We're making bacon stuffing, by the way. Sausage stuffings are pretty popular this time of year, so I figure might as well make a bacon one. To this toasty cast iron skillet, we are gonna add our one pound of bacon. While we're at it, we're gonna throw in a little dollop of our compound herb butter too. We're just gonna let this cook on low for a little bit. Let all that fat render down, let the bacon crisp up. While we wait for this bacon to cook down, let's get everything else we need ready. Starting with two ribs of celery. You can make these as big or as small as you want. The bigger they are, the crunchier they'll stay. Also got a white onion. We're gonna use about half of it. Gotta have some sage in your stuffing. Gotta have some parsley too, folks. Next thing we're gonna do is crack two eggs into a bowl along with our parsley and about one cup of our turkey stock. And this is how our turkey stock came out. Nice and gelatinous, still a little on the loose side, which is nice because it's uh, still pourable. Boop. 
But as you can see, that's the difference between a store-bought stock and a homemade stock. You can even take this down even further until it's a super solid jello. We're gonna whisk all this together, make sure all the eggs are broken down. Very nice. Over here, our bacon is cooking up really nicely, releasing a lot of fat, which is a good thing. We're gonna go in with our veg. Don't forget the sage. I'm gonna throw in a few little rosemary leaves in there as well. Two cloves of garlic. And we're just gonna let these cook down for a little bit, soften up, get to know each other, all that good stuff. We're gonna transfer this into a big metal bowl. Beep. Then we're gonna go in with our stock egg parsley mixture. Just gonna get that all in quapertad. And then we're gonna go in with a whole bunch of dry bread cubes. This is about a pound and a half. And we're just gonna get on in there with our hands and make sure everything is thoroughly combined. All these bread cubes absorb all of the stock and eggs. And as you mix, all the bread will start to hydrate in the stock and it'll uh, shrink up a little bit. This is just some white bread cubed up and dried out. I use about two and a half cups of homemade stock to get to this texture. Total that is, including the stuff I mixed in with the eggs. Nice and saturated, but still individual pieces of bread. Now we're gonna grease up this cast iron pan with some of our herb compound butter from earlier. And we're gonna go in with our stuffing. Now I'm gonna wrap this here 10 inch cast iron pan up with foil and toss it on the pit. The foil on this pan is really gonna help trap in moisture during the first part of this cook, which is gonna give us a nice tender stuffing. Ow. Jesus, Carl. What are you playing badminton over there? You lost your shuttlecock. All right, we're two and a half hours into this here turkey cook and it is looking nice and golden. Mm. We're about 45, 50 minutes into this bad Larry cook and they are both reading the correct temperatures. I threw this log in front to make sure these wingtips didn't get too burned, but they're looking nice and brown to me. The breast meat is right at 160 degrees. The thigh meat's right around 180 degrees, which is exactly where we want it to be. Probably could have gone a little cooler on the turkey breast, but I think we'll be all right. And this is about 155 degrees internal. So I'm gonna take the foil off of this and let it continue to cook and brown up. And we're gonna pull this guy off to rest. Whoo, toasty. Uh, uh, uh. While we wait for our turkey to rest and our stuffing to finish crisping up, we got just enough time to make some gravy. To this saucepan, we are gonna add one stick of butter. Now that this butter is nice and melted, you can see I let mine toast a little bit, not quite a brown butter, but adding a little extra flavor. We're gonna go in with half a cup of all-purpose flour. It's making a real basic roux right now. Make sure we're cooking out all that starchy raw flour taste. And this is really up to you how far you want to take your roux. You could let it stay blonde like this. You could take it all the way to a dark roux. Right about there is looking perfect to me. So now I'm going to go in with some of our turkey stock. Beep. Just a little bit at first. Get that all mixed up. And then we'll go in with the rest. Also earlier today, I took one of those quarts of turkey stock and I reduced the whole quart down to just that much, which is really gonna concentrate the flavor in there. So we're gonna just take this little flavor puck and add that in there and that's gonna help give us a really rich flavorful gravy. And at this point, we're just gonna bring this up to a boil to let all the flour gelatinize and make sure this is nice and thick. But while we're at it, let's go in and add a little bit more flavor. These are all of the giblets, the heart, the liver, all that stuff that was stored in the neck cavity. I cooked those along with the stock and then set them aside till right now. We'll also go in and throw in another sprig of thyme and rosemary, a little bit more onion, another head of garlic, throw in a little shot of soy sauce because Kenji Lopez told me to. Oh, here we go, up to a simmer. Once it's at a boil, that's about as thick as it's gonna get. So now you can decide how thick you want it based on how much it reduces. And that is looking good to me. Nice and thick, coats the back of a spoon nicely. Mm. This is where you taste it for seasoning. I'm gonna go in with a little pinch of salt as well as some freshly cracked black pepper. All there's left to do is send it through a strainer into our little gravy boat here. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. One more little pro tip for you. If your turkey's been resting for a long time while you're waiting for everyone to get ready and it gets a little cold, take your remaining herb butter and get it nice and hot. Right before serving, that'll help crisp up the skin, warm it up a bit, and of course, add some lovely buttery herbaceousness to your turkey. Ooh. Oh. Woo! 
And there we have it, folks. A beautiful smoked turkey, some delicious bacon stuffing with a wonderful homemade gravy with some of the best stock you'll ever have. I think it's time to dive in. Ooh, gotta have some cranberry sauce. But come on, folks. I highly recommend smoking a turkey this year. Especially because it frees up the oven for all your other sides. One of the best parts about spatchcocking your turkey is that it makes it super easy to carve. Because the legs are just held on by a little bit of skin, come off super easily. Then if you flip it over, you can kind of see where they connect right there and just whoop, drumstick. Beautiful. Not a problem. When it comes to the wings, I typically just pull them out. Ooh, juicy. One right, you kind of break the joint, find where it connects. Out it comes. The skin on the backside here, super crispy. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Next up, we're gonna take the breasts off of the carcass. You could slice it off like traditional style, but that's, uh, you're cutting with the grain if you do that. It's a lot better to just find the breast bone, hug it as close as possible, and remove it entirely. Just peel it back, try and uh, keep as much meat on the breast off the bone as possible. And then just kind of drag your tip until you get the rib cage off. And there you have it. Beautiful, super juicy, very tender, impossibly tender. And then what we can do is simply just uh, slice it up. Try and keep that skin intact as much as possible. But again, mm, so juicy. That breast meat looks so good. Let's see if it's uh, pull apart tender. Oh, I'd say so. Yup, yup, gotta love a dry brine. Salted all the way through, meat super tender, super juicy. Oh, skin crispy. Oh. All right, Brooke, are you ready for one of many Thanksgivings? <laughs> yes. So we got our thighs, we got our drums, we got our breast meat, we got some bacon stuffing, we got a delicious gravy, we got some cranberry sauce. <laughs> Dig in. Just okay, go right well, for the cranberry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I didn't make. This looks amazing. My favorite part of Thanksgiving is like, you basically just make that like one bite with everything on it kind mm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm. Bacon stuffing, check. Oh. Oh, we call that a happy whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sad whoops. <laughs> Damn it. God! <laughs> First time. Damn it, Carl. <laughs> Mm, that's good, babe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this the first time a fork has made an appearance on the channel? Possibly. Mm. I mean, it's not necessary. Yeah, that gravy's good. Look at that crispy skin, too. Hold on, let me do another Chef John reference. Fork don't lie. <laughs> All right, little, I gotta go to work. Dip a little skin in the gravy. <laughs> Cheers. It's good, actually. How's the this, this smoky flavor? It's a very subtle smoke. Highly recommend it. Woo, yes. Want some turkey for the road? I'm good, I know it's gonna be here when I get back. <laughs> you say that, me and Penelope <laughs> though. It is really good though. Uh, uh, okay, bye. Thanks for the turk. Have fun at work. Mmm, 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 I'm just gonna keep eating, I don't care. A little cranberry on there. This bacon stuffing though. I'll tell you what, that's the real winner here. A little breast meat, little stuffing, lots of gravy. Cranberry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Pee Pee, how can we only do this once a year? I always say that in the beginning of the meal and at the end of the meal, I realize why. Hmm. Gravy for me. Oh, Pee Pee, you, you deserve some gravy. You've been smelling this for four days. <laughs> bacon gravy though. Do it. And by gravy, I mean stuffing. And don't give me any of that, it's technically dressing shit. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is my version of how to smoke a Thanksgiving turkey. I really hope you give these recipes and techniques a try this year, because there really is nothing better than a properly smoked turkey. If you do give these recipes a try, be sure to tag me on Instagram, at ChudsBBQ. I love to see what y'all are cooking. I'll have all the recipes in the description of this video. While you're down there, drop a comment, let me know what you want to see me cook next. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out so much. Thank you so much for watching and I hope y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace! Now I gotta go get a few more turkeys for actual Thanksgiving. Later!